The Volkswagen Audi Group EA888 engine family made its debut in 2007, taking over from the older EA113 power plant that had served faithfully in the Golf GTI, Audi A4, and Passat. While the EA113 was respected for its performance, it relied on a timing belt and older fuel delivery systems that limited refinement and efficiency. The EA888 was born from Volkswagen's need for a modern, compact, and cleaner turbocharged engine that could meet rising global emission standards without sacrificing the spirited character their cars were known for. Production of this engine began at Audi's Jor plant in Hungary, one of the largest engine factories in the world, before expanding to Volkswagen's Silao facility in Mexico and plants in China to serve global markets. From the start, the EA888 introduced a string of clever technologies that made it a major leap forward. It replaced the timing belt with a durable chain-driven system, improving longevity and reducing maintenance. Direct fuel injection was taken to the next level with higher pressure and more precise atomization, delivering sharper throttle response and improved fuel economy. The integration of the turbocharger directly into the water-cooled exhaust manifold was a particularly forward-thinking move. This reduced turbo lag, improved thermal efficiency, and allowed the catalytic converter to reach operating temperature faster, which cut emissions dramatically. Later versions even added dual injection systems, combining direct and port injection, to prevent carbon buildup on intake valves, a common issue in earlier direct injection designs. The EA888's balance between smoothness, efficiency, and power helped it earn a spot on Ward's 10 Best Engines list multiple times, highlighting its blend of performance and innovation. The 2-liter version won the award in 2009 and 2010, while the 1.8-liter followed with back-to-back -back wins in 2014 and 2015, featured in models like the Golf and Jetta, proving Volkswagen's engineering consistency across different displacements. The 1.8-liter and the 2-liter versions share the same engineering DNA. Both are inline four-cylinders with dual overhead camshafts operating 16 valves through roller finger followers for reduced friction. Each cylinder head is made from lightweight aluminum for better heat dissipation, while the cylinder block is cast iron, chosen not for cost but for its rigidity and ability to handle the immense pressures of turbocharging. They also came equipped with a variable-length intake manifold that adjusted airflow paths to boost low-end torque or high RPM breathing as needed, and a vacuum-actuated tumble flap system to improve air-fuel mixing during cold starts and light load conditions, further enhancing drivability and efficiency. The engines feature continuously variable valve timing on both intake and exhaust cams and variable valve lift on the exhaust, optimizing torque delivery and efficiency across the RPM range. Turbocharging comes standard, and in later generations, Volkswagen used water-cooled turbos capable of maintaining consistent boost pressure under demanding conditions. The 1.8-liter variant was tuned to deliver between 158 and 170 horsepower with up to 184 pound-feet of torque, making it an ideal match for mid-size sedans and compact SUVs. The 2-liter, however, became the headline act, powering everything from the Golf GTI to the Audi A5 and producing anywhere from 200 to well over 300 horsepower depending on the version. Despite being relatively small, the EA888 earned a reputation for feeling much larger than it was thanks to its wide torque plateau and instant response. It's the kind of engine that reminds you how much difference smart engineering can make, quiet when you need it, explosive when you want it, and efficient all the time. The first generation, produced between 2007 and 2009, laid the foundation for the EA888 family, a compact, chain-driven, direct-injection, turbocharged four-cylinder that replaced the older EA113 and marked Volkswagen's shift toward smaller, more efficient turbo engines. The engine block featured two chain-driven counter-rotating balance shafts that improved smoothness but also introduced new weak points. The most persistent issue with Gen 1 was excessive oil consumption, caused primarily by defective oil control piston rings and timing chain stretch, engines burning more than about 1 liter per thousand kilometers or frequently triggering top-up warnings qualified for an internal rebuild in which pistons and connecting rods were replaced with revised units.
The faulty rings allowed excessive oil to seep into the combustion chambers, leading to heavy oil consumption, knocking, and in many cases, premature engine failure. Owners often found themselves adding a quart of oil every thousand miles. Additional problems such as PCV valve failures, coil pack burnouts, and crankshaft position sensor fault made the Gen 1 EA888 notoriously unreliable, especially in North America, where several class action lawsuits emerged around 2014. Other common issues included vacuum pump leaks, often caused by degraded seals that led to reduced braking performance, as well as intake manifold flap actuator failures that resulted in vacuum leaks, misfires, and poor idle quality. Carbon buildup on the intake valves was another widespread complaint, and unlike typical deposits that could be removed with fuel additives, these required manual cleaning or walnut blasting because of the nature of direct injection. The lawsuits focused on Volkswagen and Audi's delayed acknowledgement of these defects. In many cases, owners received partial reimbursements or extended warranties only after widespread media coverage and customer backlash. The second generation brought few improvements. Revised pistons and rings, a reduced main journal diameter, a variable oil pump, and upgraded engine management software aimed at lowering oil consumption and enhancing durability. In Audi's version, a two-stage valve lift system was added to boost both performance and efficiency. These updates made Gen 2 smoother and cleaner running, but not entirely trouble-free. The most recurring issue remained the timing chain system, specifically the plastic guides and early tensioners that could fail or loosen, leading to severe engine damage. Since this is an interference engine, a failed chain often resulted in bent valves and a destroyed cylinder head, making proactive replacement not just recommended, but essential. Some owners also continued to experience oil consumption problems, though to a lesser extent than before. The third generation, designated by codes like CJEB and CGAV, produced from roughly 2011 to 2020, brought the biggest leap in performance and technology. This version underwent a deep mechanical and structural redesign. The block and head were made more modular to simplify production across brands. Friction was reduced through lightweight internals, and overall engine weight was lowered using aluminum accessories and a composite plastic oil pan. The introduction of dual solenoid cam phasers, lighter rotating assemblies, and improved software tuning helped boost both performance and longevity. Across three internal EVO updates, this generation gained higher fuel injection pressures, a water-cooled exhaust manifold, improved turbochargers, and electronic waste gates and thermostats on certain variants. Power ranged from around 200 to 300 horsepower, with torque between 207 and 295 pound-feet, depending on tune, while high-output versions pushed further with stronger turbos and upgraded internals. Turbo lag was drastically reduced, and integrated exhaust manifolds improved heat control and efficiency. Later models also adopted dual injection systems, combining port and direct injection, virtually eliminating the severe intake valve carbon buildup that plagued earlier generations. Despite the improvements, Gen 3 is not without flaws. The water pump assembly remains one of the most fragile components. Built with a composite plastic housing, it tends to warp and crack over time, leading to slow but persistent coolant leaks. This is made worse by its integration with the thermostat and temperature sensor, which complicates replacement and drives up labor costs. PCV valve failures, occasional oil consumption, and carbon deposit buildup remained common service items, especially on high-mileage cars. When the PCV system fails, it can pull excess vacuum through the cheaply made rear main seal, causing it to collapse or leak, often mistaken for a bad crankshaft seal. Another issue surfaced on longitudinal installations, especially in certain Audi A4 and A5 models, where weak hydraulic engine mounts and mounting brackets transmitted excessive vibration at idle or under load, leading to premature mount failure and rough NVH behavior.
By 2020, the fourth-generation EA888 arrived with major refinements in materials and control systems. It introduced higher-flow turbos, enhanced cooling, and tighter calibration updates to meet strict emission standards without losing performance. Output rose across the board, with performance versions like the Golf R and Audi S3 producing torque figures exceeding 420 newton meters, or about 310 pound-feet. And now the fifth generation, set to enter production in 2025 and first showcased in China on the Terramont Pro, marks another step forward. Early factory data from SAIC Volkswagen reveal a 500-bar fuel injection system, new turbo hardware with electronically controlled variable geometry turbines, and output figures jumping from roughly 162 kilowatts to 200 kilowatts, or torque rising from about 350 to 400 newton meters. The focus this time is sharper response, higher efficiency, and cleaner combustion through extreme injection pressure and smarter boost mapping. Whether these features will make it to the North American market remains to be seen, as local emissions rules will ultimately decide which versions are offered. Aftermarket and tuning potential is extensive, especially for Gen 3 and later variants, where a stout block, modern valve gear, and a wide aftermarket of turbos, intercoolers, and ECU maps exist. Tuners begin with an ECU remap and commonly upgrade turbochargers, intercoolers, exhaust downpipes, high flow intake, and remap engine management to add boost and optimize fueling. Supporting mods often include oil cooling improvements, stronger clutch and transmission hardware, and timing chain guide upgrades for high power builds. Well-supported Gen 3 engines on stock internals are often quoted by the tuning community as reliably handling 350 to 400 horsepower with proper fueling and cooling. But longevity at those levels depends on oiling, maintenance, and avoiding detonation. It's not uncommon to see Stage 2 or even Stage 3 builds producing over 400 horsepower, provided cooling and fueling are upgraded accordingly.